grace and peace. It's a genuine pleasure to be with you this morning to know that some faces are familiar after <coughs> 20 <coughs> years, um, which is just outstanding. I, anyway, I'm definitely not that old, but um, my colleague Georgetta and I are able to be here. This is um, the stump speech of being national staff with thanks and gratitude to your gifts to our church's wider mission the OCWM offering that supports your association, your conference, and the national staff in the work that we do. Part of that support uh, makes possible our work in getting the daily devotional to your email, makes it possible to bring the still speaking writers here as they will be on Tuesday evening. And so thank you for that. With my official hat on, as someone who works in the Cleveland office, thank you for who you are as a congregation. And personally, thank you for who you are and because I am able to be here, very much in part due to the role of this congregation um, in my life very, very many years ago. Um, when I came as a volunteer corps member, I worked at Sasha Bruce Network um, down off of Capitol Hill for the year. Stayed, had a family, worked here, um, all before going to seminary in Princeton. And there were many, um, there are many friendships, there are many faces. There are mentorships that have lasted me a lifetime that started here. And so thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being where you are as a church on Westmoreland Circle. Oh, and you all don't have a clock, so here we go. This is either gonna be short or long because I don't have time on me. Uh, in that long wilderness season, when the ancient Israelites had shed the bonds of Egypt but had not yet set down roots in Canaan, it was after that whole debacle with the golden calf situation, but well before the Ark of the Covenant was built, there was this time when God and Moses got along really well. And Moses asked God for a little understanding of what might be in store. The wilderness was not a fun time, it was a long time, and Moses thought he could go to God and say, don't you just wanna put one or two cards on the table? Cause I'm really trying to rally the troops. And God and Moses were getting along, they spoke often, they shared a tent, there was some established rapport. So Moses felt like this was a candid question he could bring to God. Moses said, you keep saying that I have found favor in your sight, but don't you think people would recognize your favor better if I understood what was going on and could convey that out to the people you say have your favor? And God thought for a moment in response and then said, I'm here. Which isn't an answer to the question. Moses asks, what are you up to? Can't you tell me? And God says, hey, I'm here. So Moses presses further. God seems to be in a good mood for conversation. And Moses says, look, it's great that you're here. I appreciate that. It's really significant to your reputation as God of these people that you do show up for them. So those things are all good, but the people won't always be right here. Remember the previously mentioned wilderness situation. They are going to pick up, they are going to pack up, they are going to move around so that you are here might not be enough reassurance. Maybe if I could see your glory in person, then I'll be sure to tell the people that you are here with us no matter what or where here is. So can't I just see your glory if you're not willing to quite tell me the whole plan? Moses wants to know, how shall we know? How do we know that you're here? How do we know that we have found your favor? Many years later, books of the Bible later in a very different season of wilderness. In a time when the regions of Palestine were all territories of the Roman Empire on the edge of the Mediterranean Sea and their land then served really as an entry point into the rest of Syria to the east and into Egypt via the Red Sea to the south. 
in those difficult empire days when local leaders tried to neither upset the apple cart with Rome nor upset the religious and cultural rhythms of the people, there were some of those leaders who were local who liked to strike up conversation with Jesus. They did have a rapport with Jesus. It wasn't always friendly but they were concerned about similar things. Everyone in those days was living on edge, trying to think carefully about those ever-present questions of what our loyalties are to government and what our loyalties are to religion, what we are obligated toward in obedience and what obligates us in faithfulness. And the local leaders thought about those kinds of questions a lot. And they knew that Jesus did too. And they knew that Jesus usually had a good crowd. So they asked Jesus, well, so what's a faithful person supposed to do about government taxes? Jesus looked at a denarius, a coin, and he said, well, that looks like the face of Caesar. Which isn't an answer to the question. The people, the leaders asked, what should we do? And Jesus said, hey, look, Caesar's on the coin. They wanted to know what's the faithful way to live. And Jesus basically did a, what's behind your ear? It's a quarter. Like he, he didn't, they wanted to know what the answer was. And Jesus said, ah, look at the money. Look at the face that's on it. It wasn't a prescribed, make sure you pay your taxes every year on April 14th kind of answer. 15th, eh, whenever tax day is. So a few leaders pressed further because it wasn't an answer to the question they had asked, but still because Jesus was engaging and he was willing to have the conversations. And so they kept asking questions and they said, well, let's talk about the legalities of marriage in the afterlife. What rules will apply? How will spouses belong to each other? If they've married more than once on this side of death, how will they belong to each other when they are resurrected on the other side? The local leaders press on with this answer, with this question, how on earth are we going to know? How are we going to know how it works socially on the other side of death? How are we supposed to know the social and the faithful dynamics on this side of death? And so the questions continue in our own modern wilderness time. The questions haven't stopped. In these days when news spends more time calculating who bombed who than it seems to spend calculating the human impact of trauma. In these pre-election wilderness days when policy has started to take a back seat to a good media splash all the way up to election day, during this shared grind that I would call a social long COVID, when we collectively can't seem to catch a moment's rest to breathe, when our minds and our spirits are so overwhelmed constantly by death that we can barely see life, when every day is a storm, it's a storm of finances, of mental health, and worrying over loved ones and clutching our chests with that question of what's next. There comes a moment when we look to God for a little understanding, a little tip of the hand about the plan of what might be in store. Or frankly, better yet, at least for me these days, it's not a question of what's in store. It's like, please God, if we have found your favor, can there be for a day nothing in store? Can we pretty please have a day off? Can there be no storms, no conflicting loyalties, no horrors, no moral dilemmas, only just for a moment, quest, quiet and respite? So we take these questions and we press God further in prayer when God keeps showing up with things that aren't really the answers to the questions that we ask. We press the questions with Jesus by talking over them with one another and wrestling with one another. We ask sometimes, for example, if God's favor is even the right factor or lens that we should be taking into the context of a global war and global politics. We grow weary of counting how many coins have Caesar's face on them. 
We grow calloused by the wounds of relationships that break. We keep trying to show up in the right ways. Again and again, try to wake up, figure out the right way, do it this day, try tomorrow, show up what's the right way, what's the best way, keep showing up again tomorrow, what's the best way, keep showing up in the most authentic way, in the most faithful way, in the right way, what's the right way. We keep trying in every day to do what might be the best right that we can figure out until the very idea of doing it any singular way feels like a whole maze of knots. And we keep coming back to this question, well, how are we supposed to know which way is right? How are we supposed to know about all these coins that are circulating? How are we supposed to know what the rules will be on the other side of death? We can't figure them out on this side of it. And God says, well, listen. There's a place by me. I want you to stand there in the crevice of a rock. There's a place, and I'm not gonna let you see my face, but you will see glory passing by. Moses says, how will we know? The people ask Jesus, how will we know? We keep coming to God, how will we know? And the answer is, why don't you sit here, tuck yourself into a rock, and pay attention for God's glory to come passing by. It's not the answer we think we're looking for when we ask, how shall we know? The answer from God, though, is you will get to witness God's glory passing by. It's not an answer to the question we want to know, and God says, I'm going to let you see something. That wasn't what we asked. We didn't ask to see something. We're trying not to see many more things. We asked to know, and God says, hold on. I'm going to show you something we ask to know, to have clarity, to be sure that we are right, to feel that we at least have some peace, some resolve in our next steps, to have assurance that any of this makes a difference, that we make a difference. We ask to know, and God kind of winks and says, I'm going to show you a bit of glory. God winks and says, let me show you a song that is new every morning. Let me whisper to you glory with a sound deeper than the rumbling of the earth. Let me reveal again and again the beauty of love that pours freely out of a heart. Let me spin for you the sun and let me show you the shadows of the moon. Let me give you a peek into that pinprick of light that is millennia and and billions of years old that is shining to you and helps you know how to guide your way. Let me break you open. Let me wrap you up in community that will make it possible to withstand the storms and the questions. We ask to know and God winks and says, let me show you how peace grows even in a place of shambles. Let me show you how treasure, if it's held on to right and if it's loved over, might never be depleted. Let me multiply that mustard seed. Let me magnify the smallest gift that you think is impossible to give. Let me increase the joy of every morning. Let me show you the peace of every night. God winks and says, let me show you glory. And it's not the answer to the questions we're asking. God's glory is the counterpoint to our questions. It's the poetry to every attempt we try to put out there for logic and faith that makes sense and life that will fit in some kind of story that we can make sense of and hold on to. God's glory is the salve of mystery that whenever we long for concrete answers. God's glory, even the glimpse of the backside of God's glory passing by is the constant miracle that makes life possible. How shall we know? I don't know. I don't know. But I can tell you stories about joy breaking through sorrow. And I can share with you what's been life-giving when I'm in pain, and I can attest to miracles 
that have brought me to goodness I never expected, never trusted, and those, many of those are miracles that started and were planted here for me. How shall we know? I don't know. But I know you have stories too of grace that held you up when nothing else could. And mercy that made new things possible you didn't dream of. I don't know how we know, but I know that we keep making use of these coins with Caesar's face, these dollars with Washington's face, and somehow through them, something that God is able to do rises up from them. I don't know if we'll ever know. But I give thanks for the times when I've known glory, when it's shown up when I didn't expect it. And I praise God for the glory that is revealed to us even in the wilderness, even in our pews, even in our histories. And I know that I give thanks for the miracle that has come to me through you over the years. Amen. Amen.